Section 1.2b, Pre-Calculus Review 2, continued. In the second half of 1.2b, we'll be looking at two topics. The first one is that of inequalities. So inequalities come in a few formats. You have the greater than, greater than or equal to, or less than, less than or equal to. So these symbols are used in mathematics when you're looking at something that's at most or least or less than, different sort of scenarios. Solving inequalities is important in calculus. Um, you have linear inequalities and other kinds, um, but we will stick with linear at first. Um, the, the big thing is when you're solving, let's say you have a problem like 5x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 4 minus 2x. What you want to do is get all the variables on one side. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So, so far, we have similar methods for solving equations. Okay, now that I have the constants, can all go to the other side. I'll add 3 to both sides. 7x is greater than or equal to 7. So x is greater than or equal to 1. And you divide by 7. So the inequality didn't really change all the way through. This is the solution. You may need to leave your answer in this format or in the interval format, which I explained in the first section. In the interval notation, this would look like 1 comma infinity. And to be able to see that clearly, you can draw this on a number line. If this is 0, 1, negative 1, etc., x is greater than or equal to 1, solid dot, shade on the right, which that translates to a bracket, 1 comma, it goes on forever, infinity, simple parentheses. Okay, so this is the graphical way. That's the inequality way of writing the answer. Inequality way, and that's the interval way. Three different notations. The big thing in inequalities is when you are dividing. In this case, we divided by 7, no issues. But if you divide or multiply by negative number, the sign, the inequality's direction will flip. So if, for example, you have negative 3x is less than 9, to get x by itself, you're going to divide by negative 3, but you must flip that sign. So you get x is greater than 9 divided by negative 3 is negative 3. Okay, so that, the way you would write that as an interval, in the interval form, you would write it as parentheses negative 3 comma infinity. Again, it would be easier to do this step if you first graphed. So negative 3, there's a circle there, greater than, so you're shading on the right, etc. Now inequalities also come in compound forms, and using the word and, or the word or, and we'll talk about all this in some examples, so we'll move on to the worksheet next. Um, but before we do that, the second topic in this section is that of absolute values. And you've seen this in the past. The absolute value of a number is its distance from 0. So the absolute value of 3 is 3. The distance of 3 on the number line from 0 is 3 units. Absolute value of negative 3, the distance is 3. In general, the absolute value of x is itself it's x if x is positive, greater than or equal to 0. But the absolute value of x is its negative if the inside is less than 0. So since negative 3 was less than 0, the answer was not itself, but its opposite. That's what this is saying. So the opposite of negative 3 is 3. Okay, so these definitions and properties are given in the text. Page 20 in your textbook. You have properties of inequalities right here with some examples. <coughs> and then the absolute value definition, they're using absolute value of A is itself. If A is greater than or equal to 0, negative A if A is less than 0. Okay, onward to some problems. <coughs> some true or false questions first. Um, negative 3 is less than negative 18. Mm, is that true or false? $3 in the hole is actually better than being $18 in the hole, so it should really be greater. So this would be a false. 
negative 5 is less than or equal to negative 5 is true because it's equal and that's part of that statement. For the next one, it's a little tricky because the denominators are different, but we can write this as negative 10 twelfths by just multiplying 2 on the top and bottom. So we can compare this, since the denominators are the same, just focus on the top. Is $10 in the whole worse, less than $11 in the whole? The answer is no. Alright, the next question is if A is bigger than B, then 1 over A is greater than 1 over B. To understand this, let's put some numbers in context. 5 is greater than 2. But is 1 fifths greater than 1 over 2? This is 0.2, this is 0.5. It's clearly not true. So that's false. Notice the condition that A and B are non-zero because you cannot divide by zero. All right, the next few questions are just solving inequalities. So let's see, it says here, solve the inequality, state your answer on a number line and an interval form. So to get x by itself, we can subtract 4 from both sides. Negative 10 is greater than 5x. Divide by 5 now to get x alone. So negative 2 is greater than x, or written in proper form, x is less than negative 2. And to do this on the number line, simply put a 0 here, negative 2, less than, open hole, shade to the left. Open hole because it's only less than, not less than or equal to. And in interval form, we always go from left to right, parentheses, over here it's negative infinity, negative 2, and parentheses again. For the next question, this is called a compound inequality because you have two sides, two inequalities mixed in. But the goal is to get x by itself, and in order to do that, we're going to add 2 everywhere to all three parts. So you get negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4, which is less than, these two cancel out, you have x, 4 plus 2 is 6. Done. In the graphical form, on a number line, if this is 0, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, x is less than 6, so starting here go this way but as you go this way you stop because x is greater than negative 4 so it's just that region this whole part is the answer in interval form the answer will have parentheses on both ends because it was just strictly less than negative 4 common positive 6 the next two questions have the or statement and the and statement so to do this, just solve it as usual. To get x by itself, subtract 1, x is greater than 3. Or subtract 2 from both sides, x is less than negative 3. Okay, so the solution is more evident when you do the graph. So there's 3, there's negative 3. x is greater than 3. Open hole, shade to the right, negative 3. x is less than that, shade to the left. So these two pieces are the answer. The OR statement means it's th both of those together. The way you write this in interval form, left to right, negative infinity to negative 3, we use a union symbol, 3 to infinity. So this little u goes with the OR statement, you're doing a union. And, okay, next question. Add 4 to both sides, x is less than or equal to 5 and subtract 3 from both sides, x is greater than negative 1. This isn't quite done yet. When you have an AND statement, you might be able to squish this together as one inequality to see how you do this graph on the number line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. x is greater than negative 1, open hole, but less than or equal to 5. Solid dot, less than to the left. So really, x lives here. It's x is between negative 1 and 5. You can read this in this direction. Negative 1 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 5. The way you would write this in interval form is parentheses here, brackets at 5. I hope that makes sense. Okay, the last part of the section talks about absolute values. And the first problem is pretty straightforward. Evaluate the expression 4 plus 
absolute value of negative 4 is 4, so the answer is 8. That's it. For the next one, when you have a radical, do not use a calculator. It's going to give you decimal approximations, and you don't want that. Rather, just clean up by hand. This is root 3 times. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2, so it's 2 root 3. Plus, absolute value of negative root 3 is positive root 3, so it's 3 root 3. It's positive. Now, if you have 2 of something plus 3 of the same thing, it's of that thing. So it's, this is like saying you have 2x plus 3x. The x is these, they match. So that's 5x, or in this case, 5 root 3. The next one is a little tricky. Students commonly, mistakenly, think that they can take the absolute value and make these positive, but you can't. It's the order of operations. You have to do, you have to figure out how this comes out. For this, we go back to the definition of the absolute value. The absolute value of a is itself, if a is positive or zero, is its opposite, negative a, if a is less than zero. Now pi minus six, just that stuff inside the absolute value, is it positive or is it negative? Pi is like 3.14. Again, do not use a calculator. It'll do a crude approximation. You want to do it by hand. But it's approximately 3.14. Take away six. It's a negative quantity. So when I take its absolute value, it's going to fall into this category, and I get its opposite. So I get opposite of pi minus 6, opposite, negative pi, opposite of that is plus 6. Plus, this is an absolute value. What is pi minus 1? Is it a positive or a negative quantity? 3.14-ish minus 1, it's positive. So this would come out as itself pi minus 1, whereas this was negative, so it came out as its opposite. Those two cancel out, 6 minus 1 is 5. Okay, there's some questions like this in the homework. Be sure to try them to understand fully how this works. The next question is a little word problem. An advertisement for a certain car states that the EPA fuel economy is 20 miles per gallon in the city and 27 miles per gallon in the highway and the car's fuel tank capacity is 18.1 gallons. That's a lot bigger than my car. My car only goes to about 16 gallons. Anyway, assuming ideal driving conditions, determine the driving range for the car from the foregoing data. The range, the driving range. Well, in the city, the car's mileage is 20 miles per gallon. So that's the least it gets. So for the range, we need the least and we need the most. So if you can fill up the car tank with 18.1 gallons, how many miles can you go? 20 times 18.1, which is going to be um, 30, 362, I believe. Let's just double check. So it's 362 miles. On the highway, the mileage is 27 miles per gallon. So we take 27 times 18.1 to figure out the miles. And let's see, that would be 488.7. So the driving range, least number of miles, small to big, that goes on the left, to the most number of miles. And I'm using square brackets because you can reach up to that many miles assuming that your car functions correctly. Okay, final question. Find the maximum profit P in dollars. Now this question, using uppercase P for profit, please note that this is how it will be in our class. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of business questions, and this is a small start in that direction. Anyway, basically just solve this inequality, distribute the six, and just get P by itself and see if you can answer the original question. So that's 15,000 is less than or equal to 4P plus um, 9,600. Let's subtract 4P from both sides. So I get 2P. Now at the same time, I'm going to be bold and add 15,000 to both sides. And let's see. So we have 
four times 2400 just checking my work so I'm getting 24,600 right there so divide by 2 and P is less than or equal to $12,300 so the question is find the maximum profit then the maximum profit would be this is the most it can be is $12,300 alright be sure to try the homework and email me if you have questions